Hello everybody and welcome. Last week we saw the successful splashdown of Crew Dragon, safely returning astronauts Doc Hurley and Bob Behnken to Earth and thus completing Demonstration Mission 2, a major milestone in NASA's commercial crew program. This of course prompted me to reenact this momentous occasion in Kerbal Space Program as seen here, where a replica of the recovery ship Go Navigator grabs a capsule and puts it safely in the so-called nest on board the ship. In reality, this nest is also on rails and was quickly pulled towards the crew egress platform where Bob and Doug were put on stretchers, understandable after being so long in microgravity, and then checked out by doctors. After that, they were transported back to shore via helicopter. If you're a space fan, you probably already know everything about this procedure and also about the problems that were caused by onlookers endangering themselves and the recovery operation by coming way too close to the splashdown site. But what I really want to talk about is the interior of the capsule, because there's a lot that we have learned about it from watching the live streams. So here we go. Four fascinating facts about Crew Dragon's interior. Yeah, I know, cheap alliteration, sorry. Connected humans. Those new spacesuits SpaceX made for Dragon's crew are quite a departure from designs of old, but they do have interesting features aside from their looks. SpaceX even goes so far as calling it a suit seat system because of how the suit integrates into the vehicle. So how is that done? Basically everything the person in the suit needs is provided with a single umbilical from the seat. With it, air and electricity are provided to keep the suit pressurized in case of an emergency and of course keep communications going with the radio integrated in the helmet. Some of the features are still classified, but we may have gotten a glimpse into an additional feature during the livestream that showed us the departure of Crew Dragon from the International Space Station. We can see here astronaut Bob Behnken in what is called the comfort garment. Basically an undergarment worn inside the fancy suit. If you look closely at Bob's ribcage, we can see two red squares. I would assume those are connectors for vital sign monitors or something of the kind. There is also a very short video of the habitability test of Dragon while docked to the space station, where we can once again see Bob in his comfort garment and it appears he is attaching cables to his chest. We know that NASA likes to keep a close watch on the health of their crew. We know for instance the heart rate of Neil Armstrong during the entirety of the Apollo 11 mission. In order for it to be measured reliably, there needs to be contact with the skin of the wearer. So yeah, those red squares are very likely where the heart rate and body temperature sensors connect to their counterparts in the suit and from there to the umbilical and into the spaceship systems. I mean, I don't think it's for fashion purposes, since nobody will ever see those red squares below the white suit. Screens, screens, screens. Touch screens are now everywhere, it seems, and yes, Crew Dragon is mainly operated with touch controls. Well, when I say operated, I rather mean monitored, because most of the flight was done autonomously by the vehicle itself. Unfortunately, the camera pointing over the shoulder of Bob and Doug does not offer the highest resolution, which makes text unreadable. But we can see the different modes their displays are in. Depending on the progress of the mission, different information is being shown. This was very interesting to watch, but I would have wished that we could decipher more of what was displayed to the crew. In addition to that, each astronaut has their own iPad with manuals and other information on it. Bob was nice enough to show us his pin code to the entire world while preparing to leave the ISS, but I would assume the devices will be wiped anyways before being handed to the next crew. There are still physical buttons for some specific functions of the spacecraft. These are located in a row below the three touchscreens. Speaking of screens, we also learned something about a different type of viewing device. Windows and Covers Crew Dragon offers a fantastic view outside through two large oval windows. We know this thanks to pictures provided by the astronauts themselves. The original design for the spaceship contained a few more windows, but for safety reasons SpaceX in the end limited the amount of holes they cut into the outer hull just to provide a better view. You can still see the cutouts for those former windows in the inner hull, but they are now just blind holes. While it is desirable to have a great view of your surroundings, especially if you take a good look at the marvel that is Earth, 
There are downsides aside from those safety reasons. The trip from the ISS back to the surface took about a day and the crew was assigned an 8 hour sleep period. But in orbit they experience a sunrise every 90 minutes. Not really beneficial if you want to catch some Z's. That's why there are window covers the crew put on before going to sleep. We never saw this during the stream because when getting ready for sleep the astronauts always asked for privacy and the cameras were turned off. Understandably. I can't tell if those covers are integrated into the window like on an airliner or if those are separate pieces that have to be attached and where those are stored. Speaking of storage, space in space. If you remember how cramped it looks inside a Soyuz capsule, the Dragon appears luxurious compared to that. Bob Behnken was even able to do some sort of backflip during the journey to the ISS. Granted, this is the capsule variant with just four seats compared to the seven-seater that SpaceX can also provide. And there is lots of storage as well. The space below the seats serves as the pressurized cargo area. It was used to deliver supplies to the station, but also to bring back experiments to Earth. In addition to that, there are storage compartments around the capsule. For instance, right above or behind the crew's heads. This was only opened while both Bob and Doug were outside of their spacesuit. It also might be the place where the waste system is located, because from what I was able to read up on, it is supposed to be in the ceiling of the vehicle. The equipment within that compartment behind the crew appears to contain some kind of toiletry and towels at the very least. One thing I noticed but appears to be common for spaceflight is that everything on board is catalogued. The crew repeatedly had to report what amount of which item they took from which bag. And everything is numbered. There is a person on the ground that can precisely tell the crew where they can find what and how much of it should be there. Maybe not the most glamorous of jobs during a space mission, but definitely a vital one. Speaking of vital, the success of this mission was vital for SpaceX and for NASA as well. It has proven that commercial launch providers can take astronauts to the ISS and bring them back home safely. Well, one at least. Boeing CST-100 Starliner vehicle still needs to perform another uncrewed and then a crewed test before NASA can start launching humans on it regularly. So what's next for Crew Dragon? Well, after analyzing all the data gathered during the test flight, and yes, this still was a test flight, NASA and SpaceX will provide a final assessment and hopefully certify the vehicle for human spaceflight. After that, they will move on to the first real mission for the vehicle, Crew-1. It will carry three US and one Japanese astronaut to the ISS, but this won't happen before the end of September. Crew 2 will fly next year and will consist of two NASA astronauts, one from the Japanese space agency JAXA and one ESA astronaut. Let's see if we can still find out more about the vehicle during those missions. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.